and welcome back to DMG. Today I'm going to be giving an old machine of mine a serious upgrade. Now this is an Athlon 64X2 6000 Plus. It was released in 2006. It has two cores at 3 gigahertz, and the version I have has two megabytes combined between the two cores of L2 cache and it consumes as much power as an i9-12900K for uh, that performance, which is 125 watts for those of you who don't know that off the top of your head, because why would you? Anyway, allegedly this CPU will beat the Pentium 4 HT661 that I've been using in my uh, XP gaming system until now. Of course, this is not going in the same board. This is replacing the Athlon XP 3200 Plus in my AM2 system, which is really underpowered. It's one core at two gigahertz, and uh, I thought I would give that machine a little boost. So let's install this, run some tests, and see just how much it helps performance. All right, I've got the CPU installed. My GPU fan has ramped up for some reason. I'm not quite sure why, so sorry that you can hear that. Uh, here it is. Here are our two cores. And if I pull up hardware info, and if I pull up hardware info, <laughs> uh, you're gonna see that our CPU is recognized. Yeah, Athlon 64X2 6000 Plus. Two whole cores at three whole gigahertz. Uh, let's see. 3013.8 megahertz. Uh, let's see. And it's running at about 50 degrees right now on core 0 and core 1. So these are two discrete cores. It's not hyper threaded like my Pentium 4 system was. Well, let's try it out. Let's uh, see how it does in Cinebench. Now, I am going to close hardware info just so we get the maximum possible performance. And I have a list of Cinebench scores, Cinebench 2003 and R10, ranging from the Athlon 64300 Plus that this replaced at the lowest end, and uh, up to a Core 2 Quad Q9650. Oh, also, I should say, I'm not using the original 2000s power supply in this computer anymore. I upgraded it to a Thermaltake Smart 430 watt because uh, I'm not going to try and use a 125 watt CPU on that old 200 watt power supply. Okay, 62.1 seconds. Oh my god. That competes with Core 2 Duos. This is the speed of a Pentium E5200, which is a Core 2 Duo based chip at, it's like 2.6 gigahertz maybe? 2.8 maybe? I forget exactly how many, but this is, uh, it competes with low end Core 2 Duo chips. This clapped my Pentium 4. I got a score of 424. And my Pentium 4 661 got a score of 311. All right, now for the multi-thread test. We'll see how this does. I'm expecting it to be on par with the Core 2 Duo again. It's just amazing that uh, I, I didn't expect it to do that well. I expected it to beat the Pentium 4, but not by that much. It's probably only gonna take about 30 seconds to do this test because the scaling on this is very good. On the Core 2 Duos, there was a 97% performance improvement over using, you know, using two threads over one, two cores over one. So we'll see how much the speed up is here. Ooh, 87%. So that's interesting. There's, it scales not as well as a Core 2 Duo. But still, 795, so that competes with... Wow, so that beats a Core 2 Duo E6400. And it's a little below the Pentium E5200 because its scaling isn't as good. And I think that might have to do with cache, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, so single-threaded, it's about 60% faster than the Athlon 64 that it replaced. And multi-threaded, it is, um, 
Let me do the head math really quickly. Um, it's about three times, so that's 300% faster. So yeah, this was definitely a worthy investment for the like 20 bucks I paid for this chip. Again, though, make sure your power supply uh, is up to this, because uh, not all will be, because this is a very high draw chip. And uh, again, it also gets pretty hot, so I might consider replacing the stock cooler at some point, although it seems to be doing okay. And now we've finished our um, Cinebench R10 test in 5 minutes 48 seconds. Uh, so we soundly beat the uh, Pentium 4 661, which got a score of 1963. Got a little post-it note with these scores, sorry you can't see it because of the contrast, but trust me, I have them written down from when I did all of these tests. It took several hours to test all of my machines. And uh, we get a score of 1567 on the old CPU that this replaced. So that's like 700 points faster, so that's about 33% faster in this test versus the old one. As a joke, I benchmarked my workstation's 16-thread CPU on Cinebench R10, and we got a score of 27,497. I doubt this CPU will get anywhere close to that, but I have a feeling it'll be between the Core 2 Duo E6400 and the Pentium E52 and 300, as it has consistently been. But it's beating these first three CPUs on our list, which is the Pentium 4 631, 661, and then the Athlon 64 3200 Plus, which are the, you know, retro CPUs that I've had. Three minutes, two seconds. And uh, there goes our CPU fan ramping back down. Whoops. Bonked the camera. So that's 40 seconds faster than the Core 2 Duo E6400. Or Core 2 Duo 6400, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just 5 seconds slower than the Pentium Dual Core E5200. So again, it's in that range. And... Uh, <laughs> wow, it beats the Pentium 4 by about a thousand CB, the fastest Pentium 4 that I have. And uh, it demolishes the Athlon 64, the other one, because of course it has twice as many cores. And it's clocked higher. And as you can see, it is running very smoothly. Again, I'm sorry. If I could do something about the flickery screen, I would. It does not appear that way to me in person, and it's an LCD, so I have no idea why it's flickering. Oh, we just saw a lag spike. But honestly, I think that might be more from the GPU than the CPU. So yeah, as you can see, even in areas with like water and stuff, it's running very well. Particle effects don't seem to throw it off. Oh, uh... Yeah, particle effects don't seem to throw it off like they did with the Athlon 64 3200 Plus, because again, it's got two cores. Alright, that is going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you especially enjoy my content, and see you next time.